Welcome to this week's shooting show. Uh, we're at home in Ayrshire in summer, believe it or not. Yesterday morning uh, I wanted to get out and try and shoot a roebuck um, on a castle estate close to home and um, nice morning, weather forecast fine, set off and got completely drenched so we called it a draw. So we reconvened this morning, um, stalking some fields around the house actually and nearly back um, to the house breakfast time and we just nicely got into a, a, a quite a nice book in a, a restock site um, at the side of the house so I hope you enjoy it. I think we've got a few too many on here, so I'm going to go and have a look this morning, just for an hour. It's an area that we get quite a lot of walkers in. Um, we've had a bit of crappy weather for a couple of days, actually. It's been quite wet. I've really got probably an hour, hour and a half before civilised hour, shall we say, when I can get in uh, before anybody kicks around, see if we can uh, see anything. We'll have a look, see what we can do. Yeah, that's um, one of those mornings where we're just getting into a really good part of the estate, just on the bank in here, and it's just absolutely April showers in May, it's torrential. Um, so we decided to call it a draw and we'll try again when we get better weather. Any self respecting deer is now shot into the thickest cover, tucked up nice and warm. So it's a lovely morning up to that point. Anyway, I can't know anything about the weather, even the dog's pissed off. Okay, so we're uh, nice and early, uh, just turned kind of 4.30, um, light's coming up nicely now. We're literally going to stalk close to the house this morning. Um, Alex has got some barley and rye field just at the back, but there's been a couple of young robots knocking around at the top of the field, so I'm going to have a look at those. Um, a, couple, a couple of decent books as well, so we're generally going to have a, just a bit of a, a mooch about around the house this morning and see what's what. So she's keen to go, so I think we'll get off. Um, I've got the 
uh, Jaeger, the Hanel Jaeger 10 with me this morning. It's a cracking little rifle. It's a Leopold VX3 scope on it, which it's just a nice combination, and I particularly like it for row. The 243 is a great combination for row. Um, be interesting to see what develops re non toxic ammunition, but um, we'll see how that kind of develops because uh, I'm using that in the Creed mode. But I've still got lead in here at the minute uh, until they develop a load that, that kind of works. So we'll go and have a look. This is where the couple of young bucks have been hanging around on some fresh grass here but um, Alex put the cattle in, must have only been here a day. Moving them out of the sheds now to, to uh, graze in the summer on the grass. So there's 15 or 18 bullocks in here now which will be skitty as hell because they've just come out of the shed. So any deer that have been coming onto this field will not mix with those because they'll be really curious and come and start charging about. So this is the area that the young bucks have been hanging around in. And on our right we've got a, a rye field which is kind of nearly up to above my knees now so the only chance you can see any deer is if they happen to be feeding just on the, on the margin so I'm going to work down into the wind <coughs> just come down one of the tram lines just in case there's something feeding in the bottom I'm going to work over to a, a little block just across here nicely into the wind we can see a few deer feeding in the scrubby stuff over there now so we're going to just check the valley bottom it's quite a coolish wind actually it's a lovely morning to be out Yeah, you see, we've got um, historic damage from a roebuck on here. Yeah, there's three or four uh, there on there, which the castle owners planted to just to screen this gap. And they've been particularly enjoyed by the roebucks as they thrash and fray. That's older stuff, but we've got some more recent activity here. We can see where they've been rubbing and fraying. The sap on that is still not that, not that old, so that's relatively fresh. And then on the next tree down, again, you've got um, older historic damage where they've really rubbed it to the freshest stuff on here and there's still some i can still feel moisture in the sap there so that's been done within the last 24 hours so there's been a robot regularly walking around here so he's gonna have to go um, so if we find him this morning
just sort of chilly. I have, a, I have got a shot from here, it's partially obscured, it's got some brash, uh, and I'm not 100% certain on the ID, so I want to make sure, so I'm going to try and get down the forward and track onto that next knob. First of all, get a positive ID on it. The thing that's concerning me a bit is the wind sucking a little bit into the valley, but I think when we get through there, it should come up that way, so we should be not wind in that deer. Laid plans and all that, and um, it doesn't always work. When I've had a closer look at that book, um, the antlers were actually two perfectly positioned um, twigs right behind its head where it was sat. Um, so, as I've got just set up to have a real good look at it, um, it's moved the head, and the antlers have stayed there, and the head have moved over here. So, that book's turned into a door. Um, so that's what I was saying about positive ID. I mean, I never shoot a deer until you're 100%. In any event, that wind is now. What I was worried about is just sucking. It's sucking round up. It should be blowing that way. But just in this valley, it's sucking up the stream and it's blowing up here. And it's, you can feel it right in the back of my neck. And you could see a reaction. She suddenly put the nose up and uh, time's getting on. I think we'll just progress on the forward track. Look into the little next knoll and then we can cut back across to the house so uh, all we've seen this morning is, is doors We've done a bit of a loop now, the house is it's kind of just across the valley, a couple of fields. So there is a little restock bank in here, just on the left hand side. So this is definitely the last ditch saloon. It's getting a bit late now, they're probably deer. Not sort of three hours before first light, but I'm going to be laid up now, just chilling. But just in this top, it's really thick, willowy, scrubby stuff. It's not a bad place just to maybe catch a book, perhaps just, just marking, strutting this stuff. So. Dog will tell me if there's anything in there anyway, and then if that's a no, a no joy, we're going to just walk back across the field and I'm definitely ready for a cup of coffee. And I feel a bit because I'm coming on. Got it. Stand back. You stand back. Yeah, it's just coming to the right. It's just to the right now. Behind that. It's gone behind that. See its ass? It's the it's backside's there. It's right in front of that stump. Hey! Girl, good girl, good girl, good girl. Well done. It's the culmination of a, of a lovely morning out actually. Around the house, we've done a we've done a big look. Seen a lot of deer, a lot of doors. Um, I was hopeful we might find a few kids uh, just on the edge of the fields because often that's where they'll, you know, they'll leave them. 
Um, we were really at last chance saloon, having passed, I don't know, four or five doors. One I kind of thought was a book, and then when we finally identified it, it wasn't. This is a really nice book, actually. A lovely form, beautiful. I mean, they're lovely animals. I love these deer. Lovely summer coat now, just coming out. Starts around the neck and the groin area, so another week or two, that'll be fully fox red. It's a nice book, potentially a really, really good book. If, that, if I'd have seen that book up on the back of the fields, back of the house, I wouldn't have shot him, but we've got a lot of natural birch regen in here, which is what the farmer wants. We've got, we've got hazel, alder, a lot of birch and beech and some willow. And this is the, this is the book's domain. And you can see the sort of damage that that's can be completely ringed. So a lot of this will be, will be damaged. Um, so it's one of the reasons why we just keep a close eye on these sort of natural regeneration areas just to keep the deer numbers in check. You don't want to shoot everything but just want to keep the deer numbers in balance. And that's a that's a nice book. It would have made a nice book but some scenarios you would have left that to, to come on but when he's damaging all around the trees here then he's met his, uh, he's met his maker this morning but I just love stalking these animals. Um, Watched him for quite a while as he's working through and I never really got a clear shot but he did come just into a bit of an open area but there was a bit of a lateral branch um, and kind of across the, the the shoulder area here so I just I just was aiming to nick underneath it a nice little window which should be a heart shot and I, at, one, at one point there I thought I'd maybe gone a bit too low because I kind of jumped up and thought I might have gone brisket but it's absolutely perfect it's gone right through the heart so Again, it's the accuracy you need. You need confidence in your kit if you're shooting through kind of like a, a little small, almost like a little small window. Um, so if there's a problem with it, the rifle or accuracy, it's, it's not the rifle, it's the it's behind it. So I thought I'd, I'd gone a bit low this morning, but proof's in the pudding. So we're going to take this back. Uh, and fortunately, we're only about 200 yards from a larder, so we'll do a gallop back in the larder this morning. And then breakfast. Hi, I'm Mark Ripley, and this week we're going to be having a look at Pulsar's XP50 Thermion 2 rifle scope. It's the thermal rifle scope, it's also the LRF model, which means it's got a laser rangefinder built in. Now, I've got to be honest, when I uh, first saw this scope, I wasn't particularly taken with it, um, mainly, well, purely on looks alone. The actual performance of this scope is a very different story. Um, and as I've used it more and more, I've uh, taken quite a shine to it. So uh, although we've covered this before, I thought it was only fair really that we have another look at it and um, just maybe take it out and see if we knock over a few rabbits with it. Now, just a very quick rundown of the scope. Uh, as you can see, 30 mil tube. Um, it's kind of a standard thing now with these sort of thermal um, day scope looking rifle scopes. You've got all your main controls on the eyepiece there. It takes the um, Pulsar battery packs, which I've just dropped. There we go, <laughs> one of those. That drops in there. Um, it comes with two of those, they're rechargeable. There's also an inbuilt battery in there, which is rechargeable. Uh, menu system is accessed via this little button on the side here and wheel. Power button on the front there. Um, one thing I do like about this is the focus wheel. You can see it's just here on the side and it's also on the other side as well. So it doesn't matter if you're left or right handed, that is nicely to hand whichever uh, hand you choose to use. So overall, nice little scope, does all the standard things that you'd expect from Pulsar scopes. It records, um, also records with sound as well, which is a real nice advantage that not a lot of night vision and thermal scopes incorporate. So it's also got all the standard features that you expect to find on a Pulsar scope. You've got picture-in-picture -picture mode, you've got the colour palettes, um, you've got zero, uh, zero in profile so you can store different um, zero settings for your rifles. Um, you've also got uh, a zoom on there um, which goes from uh, 4 to 8 to 16. 
um, rangefinder. I believe they reckon that goes out to 800 meters from what I remember, but realistically, obviously at night, you're not likely to go out that far. Now, I've tested this against my uh, Leica rangefinding binoculars, and it's been spot on. It's been, there's been a, a yard or two in it, nothing, it's as good as, as good as bang on. Uh, so that works very well, which also explains the shape of the scope if you hadn't already sussed that out. That is purely to house your laser range finding unit in the top there. So yeah, that's a, a basic rundown of the scope. Um, I particularly like this scope. I've got it set up on my 2.2 at the moment, and I've found that this scope is brilliant for rabbiting um, because you can range rabbits and you've got the mill dot reticle in there, so you can actually just hold off and take some sort of probably longer shots than what you'd normally comfortably do at night uh, with a night vision or thermal scope. So all in all, it has grown on me, as I say, for, for this sort of thing, for like 2.2 rabbiting, for ratting, all those kind of things. This is, this is a brilliant little scope for that. Uh, and of course, obviously, it's more than good enough for a um, bit of foxing uh, and you have got that ability to take longer shots as well with the range finder built in so right let's have a little wander around and see if we can find a rabbit or two So there you go, as you can see, the Thurman 2 is very clear. Um, it's a very good little rifle scope, very easy to use, very in intuitive. Um, having that laser rangefinder on there, yes, it does make the uh, scope look a little bit bulky. It's an uh, unusual design. But if you can look past that, and uh, just bear in mind, this is a very effective tool. So for pest controllers and uh, keen foxes and that, then certainly well worth a look. Okay, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like us on the social media platforms and remember, if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join. We're looking after your sport, We're looking after you. This has been The Shooting Show. If you aren't a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you.